Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. It's me, Paul Neal, as always, and I'm here. Basically asked by you guys on Instagram. Um, we put questions out to the audience and they asked me to pick my 30-man squad provisional for the games between Switzerland and Bulgaria. So here I am with my 30-man squad. Albeit I don't believe in these provisional squads, I'm pretty, pretty sure we're like the only country in the world that does these squads. I think they're stupid, they should just give the final squad, but uh, I'm going to give it a go anyway. And, uh, you know, if you don't like my picks, that's fair enough. You can give me your picks in the comments, that's totally fine. So I'm going to start off with Darren Randolph in goals, and I don't think you can look past him, especially for the Switzerland game. I think he has to be our number one. Or number 23, if you're at it. That's a squad number. But uh, he has to be our, our our goalie, in my opinion. I just think that, you know, coming off the back end of last season, probably our best player. Um, he won the fans player of the year, both Middlesbrough and both and Ireland. So, for me, Darren is definitely in there. I don't think anyone's going to disagree with me on that one. So, I kind of moved off that one pretty quick. Uh, I'm surprised he didn't get a Premier League move in the summer, but how and ever. Um, Kieran Westwood then I would go with, I know he missed the last round of qualifiers because he was uh, injured and he, ne or he needed surgery sorry and that's the reason he wasn't in the squad so he I think now is back and uh, I think he'll be back up to Darren in goal and then Mark Travers um, at Bournemouth obviously people remember him most notably for the game against Spurs last season when Bournemouth beat Spurs and everyone thought he was absolutely outstanding and it was a great debut by him. So I hope it's a case where he's in the squad and maybe he gets a half and Westwood gets a half against Bulgaria. That would be an ideal situation. But if Mick McCarthy was to give Travers his first senior cap and let him play the full 90, I mean, I don't think he'd find too many fans disappointed with that I think if you're going to go with those three keepers I think they're our best three you know people might say Cuevin Kelleher I just think he's just not at that level yet I think he, he can be and he can get there pretty quick but I just you know Travers has, has already made his Premier League debut Westwood's very you know very experienced and you know he's done it at, at clubs at I wouldn't say the top level but he's done it at a decent level for most of his career and obviously Darren then you know yourself, you probably our best player last season. Um, and definitely kept us, uh, definitely saved. So you think of the Gibraltar save, the save against Pulse and, and a couple of others. And he made one against Georgia as well. So he's definitely saved us in the past. And I think that uh, you can't really look past him as our number one. But then moving on to the defenders, then I'm going to go with Seamus Coleman. I think um has to be in there, is our captain. Um, you know, I kind of run out of things to say about Seamus because I love him so much. He's, he's just such a great professional. He comes in, he's, he's constantly tested at, at club level and proves time and time again that he's good enough. You know, people were saying that he was finished last season. Finished the end of the season strongly with Everton and, you know, now is rewarded as their club captain. So I don't think he can um, really not have Seamus in that squad, regardless of whether you think he should start ahead of this man, Matt Doherty, who's obviously next up. And again, just really, really unlucky. And it's just su such an Irish thing that he happens to be playing in the same position as our probably other best outfield player. He's unfortunate in a way. I, I think uh, it, Matt is, is that um, Mick won't really go for that, you know, play one in front of the other. And I do think unless Seamus gets injured, that Matt won't play the Switzerland game unless he's brought on as a sub maybe. But uh, I think the Bulgaria game is going to be his uh, his game to start, unfortunately. But uh, ideally, I'd like to see both of them in the same team, but I'm not the one who picks the team, unfortunately. So anyway, uh, another person who, 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 who I think is going to have the same similar issue um, over Richard Kyo is John Egan. I think he had his Premier League debut at the weekend there. And, you know, all the reports online and, and everyone commenting on our posts said that he was the standout player for Sheffield United and he's their captain. So he seems to be adapting to life in the Premier League quite well, although it's been one game. But uh, in my opinion, I would like to see John get some sort of a run. I do think... I personally think he's better than Kyo, but you know, as a, again, as I say, I don't pick the team. But uh, I would like to see Egan get a run. I think it's he's he's you know served his way and clawed his way up from like Gillingham, Sunderland, all these clubs in the lower divisions, and and worked his way back up, moving from Brentford then to to Sheffield United, a record signing, captained them, 
and uh, got them up. So, you know, I I struggle to see why he can't get in at least one of the games. But uh, you know, I I do see mixed point in this that he has Shane Duffy in there, who's obviously next on my my list of players to to, to pick there. But uh, Kyo and Duffy seem to have a good partnership and they're quite solid and they have a lot of clean sheets so I can see that side of the argument but I would just like to see John Egan get a run and he might do he might, Kyo might get injured in the run up not that I want that to happen but um, if he does I think do think that Egan is ready to step up that's more my case uh, Shane Duffy obviously won 3-0 the, the other day been fantastic you know, since he's came into the Premier League, he's just gone up another level. So I'm very surprised that uh, other teams haven't come in and looked at maybe buying him. He's such a threat in the air. You know, not only does he frighten strikers, he also frightens their defenders when he's in the opposition's box. You know, deadly from set pieces, um, and just improving all the time. But I just he's proven now he's a you know very solid Premier League player. So um, obviously I have Shane in there, uh, and then my last defender which might cause a bit of a, a store centre-half, is um, Nathan Collins at Stoke. He obviously captained Stoke last night. Uh, he's 18 years of age. He's captain of Stoke, which is, you know, he's captain him ahead of the likes of James McLean and, and so on, who were in the squad, or in the match day squad as well, I believe. So I think that shows the character. He's captain or in the underage level as well. So I think you're, you're looking at him and you can see he's, he's a leader. Why not get him in the squad there? I mean, who else are you going to have in there ahead of him? Kevin Long? I mean... What's the last thing Long's done in, in a while? Like, I can't, I can't remember anything of note, you know. I, albeit he's playing at Burnley, but I don't think he's getting much of a look in there. And, you know, he's not really done anything in the last year. I think it might be might be time for him to leave Burnley, if I'm honest. But uh, I'd like to see Collins brought in there and obviously play the game against um, Bulgaria. I don't think he'd be brought in for the Switzerland game. But if he's brought in and around the squad and kind of learns from I don't think it's, it, it's as much of a risk as, say, bringing in a younger player to try and get his goals because at least with Collins he's captain the team in the championship you know so that's that's the way I look at it then you have uh, your two left backs in uh, Ennis Stevens, who I think is you know absolutely solid there at left back hasn't put a foot wrong since he stepped into that position and then Greg Cunningham has just got to move to Blackburn which I think he needed after that season with Cardiff and was unlucky again um, that you know didn't really seem to get much of a look in under O'Neill I do think there's a, there's a there's a good good quality player in there. Sorry, um, and I would like to see more of them. To be honest, so I would like to see Steven start against Switzerland, and then I would like to see uh, Cunningham then play that position then versus Bulgaria, just to, just to have a look at him, just to see what he can do. I mean, it's the, the friend doesn't really mean that much, in my opinion. Other people would argue. Uh, in midfield, then, Alan Brown, this will probably be the third time he'll be, he's been called up. Um, the other two, he's been injured. So hopefully, if that is the case, he'll get a look in here as well because Mick McCarthy seems to be a huge fan of him. Back when I interviewed him, he was raving about all his goals and really looking forward to having him in the team. And then, unfortunately, he just hasn't, had him, he hasn't been able to have him in the team. Uh, then I got Jeff Hendrick in there. I just think that you have to have Jeff in there. He knows the squad. He knows the manager. You know, he obviously scored against Gibraltar. Um, <clears throat> I haven't seen I haven't seen or heard much of him this summer from a Burnley point of view. I know he got linked with a move to Sheffield United the other day, but um, I think you have to have him in there. I think in and around the squad at least. I I just think that he has the experience and he's he's a good he's a good mix with the squad if that makes sense. Then you have Connor Howrahan, which he likes to pronounce it that way. So it's not Howrahan; it's actually Howrahan. He said in a recent interview, and again. Um, it seems uh, like since he's been brought in by Mick, he's been a breath of fresh air. Didn't really get a look in under O'Neill again. But uh, he's came in and, and looked the real leader in the team there. And, you know, he's playing the Premier League now, which can only be a good thing for him. So I think he's just going to get better now. So ho hopefully that is the case. Then uh, Jay uh, James McCarthy, who Mick McCarthy went and watched play for the under-23s at Crystal Palace the other day. So I think I, I think it's a, that's a no-brainer. Glenn Whelan hasn't got a club, so... You know, why not bring in a player that's better than him and now has finally moved and is probably going to get some game time, which he's badly, badly needed. Then uh, Callum O'Dowd, Alan George, Robbie Brady um, and James McLean. I mean, as I said about Jeff Henry, I think you have to have these guys in there. They know the squad and they know what it's all about and they, they know all about playing for Ireland. Now, a couple of wild cards I'm after putting in here are... 
Jack Byrne. I would love to see Jack Byrne put in that squad. And, you know, if he can do well in that squad and then maybe possibly play the game against Bulgaria. He's shown what he can do in Europe. He's, he's five goals, uh, for, say, five assists and one goal. Um, just, you know, you can see he's a level above and he should be playing over in England. Albeit he might not want to go to England, That's and that's totally fine. We should, anyone who, who's, you know, staying in Ireland should come and watch him because he's fantastic. And, you know, I did an interview with Keith Fahey the other day and he just said, like, if he wants to be an Ireland regular, he could. It's just entirely up to what he wants to do. So I, I, I'm putting Jack Brown in there. That might be a surprise to some people and it might not be a surprise for some people, but that's just it for me. Uh, then I would also have Jason Malumbi, who was on loan at Millwall from Brighton. Again, this is more with a look to bring him in maybe for the Bulgaria game. It's not for the Switzerland game. He finished the Toulon tournament as one of the players of the tournament, uh, the under-21 tournament most recently. He was a midfield captain. Made his debut for Millwall last night in the Carabao Cup. Um, so, yeah, I, th I would have him in there. And then I'd as strikers, then I have Didzy, Dave McGoldrick, Callum Robinson, Sean McGuire, Michael Obafemi, Shane Long, James Collins, and I've gone with, would you believe it? Troy Parrott and Adam Eda. Now, people might, you know, this is a 30-man provisional squad, so I'm just putting in what, who I would like to see, at least given the mention. I don't like these provisional squads. McGoldrick, I think, is going to be our, our, our you know, tally, well, I wouldn't say Tally's man, our target man. And I think that, you know, maybe someone like Obafemi playing off him or Robinson and McGoldrick starting up top together like they did for Sheffield United. I think that could that could really work. So um, with maybe Parrott either or Collins, you know, on the bench coming on and maybe making a difference. I do, I do like Obafemi there. Uh, Shane Long, I like having him in there, but he always seems to be injured now for us. So... Yeah, um, well, basically, that's that's it in regards to my provisional squad. Let us know who you'd have in the squad. Did I miss anybody? Um, do you agree or disagree? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to drop a like on the video. I'll speak to you all soon. Thanks for watching.